In this lesson, we're going to talk about linear and angular speeds. Um, they're similar, but they're also very, very different. Um, angular speed is how fast a round object is spinning, like a second hand on a, on a wristwatch. Um, and basically, your angular speed is always kind of a degrees per second or radians per second. The symbol for that is a symbol called omega. It's supposed to be a fancy W, Greek version. Um, it's kind of the best I got. Uh, but basically, angular speed is as straightforward as just um, your degrees divided by time or your radians divided by time. Simplify it out. And it does not matter how big or small that object is. So if it was a very, very large clock, as opposed to a very, very small clock, it still goes 360 degrees in one minute. So it doesn't matter the size of it at all. As opposed to a linear speed, it does matter. So it says how fast uh, a round object, um, so it's kind of spinning, but it would be, the idea would be it would be traveling, like a tire is rolling down the road. Well, if the tire has one revolution but it's a really, really small tire, then it doesn't get as far in the same amount of time as a really big tire. If that big tire was going one time around every second versus a little tire going around one time every second, the big tire is gonna get further down the road, making it have a miles per hour or a feet per second kind of a thing. So the bigger the object, potentially the faster it's traveling um, if it has the same kind of angular speed to it. So angular speed does play a role with linear speed, but I treat linear speed as something I'm familiar with. Rate times time equals distance. And if I isolate rate, it's gonna be distance divided by time. Well, this distance that we're talking about is a circle, and the circle's rolling down the road. So it's circumferences, but there may be a bunch of them. So it's the number of circumferences. It could be half a circumference, it could be 20 circumferences in a certain amount of time. But that's how I'm gonna figure it out. My rate is going to equal my distance divided by time, where size matters. So uh, we have two examples. One of them is if we're trying to find the linear and angular speeds of the second hand on Big Ben. Uh, it doesn't have a second hand, but if it did have a second hand, uh, how fast would it be traveling? So what we need is the fact that the radius is 14 feet. Angular speed does not need that. doesn't care. It's just going to know how many degrees in a certain amount of time. So for angular, we don't need the radius. Angular is just going to be, um, it's just gonna be our little fancy W. It's going to be degrees divided by time. So for ours, we're gonna say it's 360 degrees in one minute, all right? Uh, so 360 degrees per minute is equal to 360 degrees in 60 seconds, which makes 6 degrees per second. All right, so if we wipe away the zeros, it's really just 36 divided by 6. So every 6 degrees... Um, the second hand on any kind of a clock is, um, so six degrees per second on any clock. However, linear. linear. Your linear speed is rate times time equals distance. So if we have our rate is going to be distance divided by time. So our distance is one time around, but one circumference. So we need our radius measurement. So it's one circumference. 2 pi r is what we're looking at for our circumference. So one circumference, and if we divide that by um, time, we're gonna say that that is one time around, so that's one minute. We'll make it in seconds here in a second. Um, but that ends up being 28 pi, and this is, needs gonna need a label with it, feet, in 60 seconds. So if you divide that out, uh, that ends up being about 1.47 feet per second. So about a foot and a half every second if a second hand was going around on Big Ben. But if it was any other clock, 
smaller, bigger, it's going to definitely be different uh, amount of distance traveled in each second. Okay, so second example is we got a pulley. And a pulley has a radius of six centimeters. It's rotating 80 revolutions per minute. We're going to find the angular and linear speeds per second. So again, our angular is going to be very different kind of an answer. Um, and because the size of this thing doesn't matter. So this six centimeters is irrelevant. So for our angular is our fancy W. And we are looking for um, kind of our degrees. Um, degrees in a certain amount of time. And they give us a revo 80 revolutions per minute, but then we want to find it in per second kind of a thing. So uh, let's start off with radians. Um, just because 360 degrees and then we have 80 of them is going to be a pretty good size number. So if we start off with um, radians, we have um, 80 one time around. Eight, 80 360s or 82 pies in one minute. Okay, so if we simplify that out, this gets us 160 pi. Notice there's no length kind of a measurement to it because angular is irrelevant on the length. And it will make that 60 seconds. So if we divide that out, we are going to get about, um, if you wipe away that, the zeros, that's going to become 8 over 3. So 8 pi over 3 radians per second. Or uh, anything over 3 is a 60 degree reference angle, so you're looking at 860s. So that makes or uh, 480 degrees per second. Just kind of depends on what you're looking for. So that's your angular speed, your linear speed. So your linear spe speed is your rate. It's going to be your distance divided by time. Well, we have 80 um, revolutions, so we have 80 circumferences. And for our circumference, being 2 pi r, we have a radius of 6 centimeters, so 2 pi 6 centimeters. We have 80 of them divided by, it's a per minute measurement, so we'll make that into um, 60 seconds here in a second. Um, but this is going to be 12 times 8 is 96. The zero tacked on, so centimeters in 60 seconds. And um, the zero wipes away, six actually goes into 96, and it gets you 16 pi centimeters per second, which is roughly 50.27. Centimeters per second. All right, and that was linear and angular speed. Um, and there's different formulas and everything for it, but I don't love thinking of this as a different formula. I think of just this as something that I've done in the past, where it's rate times time equals distance. I just have to make sure that my distance are circles, um, aka circumferences, and we just got to figure out how many of them we have in a period of time and then we can figure out our, our rate. All right, that's it, thanks.